That isn't what I was supposed to say, right? I forget what's the phrase I'm supposed to avoid. I have no clue. Maybe I just said it. Hi everyone, I'm Sean, and today I'm going to be showing birds. Hi everyone, I'm Sean, and today I'm going to be showing you all of my signed books. There are 65 of them, so we gotta get into it quickly. Here we go. The first one is actually packed away in a box buried in a closet somewhere, so I'm not going to get that one out, but it is Al Gore, Six Drivers of Climate something something. I got this book in Columbus, Ohio at the Book Loft, which is like a German village part of town. It's a real cool bookstore, but I saw an Al Gore signed book there. So it was my first vice presidential autograph. So that is the first book. <coughs> ah! Man of work. Okay, starting at the top of my bookshelf and working our way down. Uh oh, gotta sneeze. Don't you just hate you start a booktube video and you just gotta sneeze. Okay, something else, unless I say otherwise, I have not read these books yet or any books by these authors. And if I mention that they come off the top 1000 list, that refers to this book here. A thousand books to read before you die. So here we go. N. Scott Momaday, House Made of Dawn. I guess this was a real popular Native American writer. The next one I don't really count as a signed book. I didn't add it to my Goodreads signed books shelf because I'm not sure it's real, but it's Charlton Heston autographed book, The Courage to be Free. Charlton Heston is one of the more faked signature celebrities out there. In fact, his signature may be one of the most faked. So I don't know if it's real or not, but I. It cost me 12 bucks, so I was like, eh, why not take the risk? The book is probably worth 12 bucks. At least I have it. Next is one I just got a few days ago, but that is Amy Tan, The Hundred Secret Senses. Amy Tan is the author of The Joy Luck Club, which is off the top 1000 list, and it's also a book I read. I didn't really like it all that much, but I didn't really hate it either. It was just kind of a so-so eh, book. I have also not seen the movie about it, but I saw this on the at the bookstore and I was like, ooh, Amy Tan, I gotta get that. So there it is. This is also a new one for me. Midnight in the Garden of Good and Evil by John Berendette. No clue about it, but I think it's a gorgeous cover. Also a fun fact, this book features a cemetery in Savannah, Georgia. And one of the books I'm working on actually has scenes set in that same cemetery. And maybe I even described that statue there. I don't know, but that's kind of a neat little coincidence. But this is also a top 1000 book. Okay, the next two I definitely think belong in museums. The first one is The Dragon in the Sea by Frank Herbert, who wrote Dune. I started to read Dune back in high school. I did not get very far. All I remembered was like a president was kidnapped and he woke up in the room and some guy came in and was like, we know you're awake. We know how much drugs you were given. And that's really all I remember from the book, but Dune by Frank Herbert. Something cool about him, the bookstore owner said, Frank Herbert would go around to bookstores and book fairs and yard sales and stuff and if he saw one of his books, he would cross out his name and he would sign it. And that's what he did with this one. So that is real cool, I think. The next book is another master of science fiction. That is Ray Bradbury, The Martian Chronicles. And this, I think, was the first book he published. So that's real special. I read Fahrenheit 451 in high school. I don't really remember it. I just remember there was something about like a robot dog or something. But I definitely knew Ray Bradbury and then again he's a master of science fiction so I'm real glad to 
have that. The next book is a book that was recommended to me from the librarian, and then I later found out it also happened to be on the top 1000 list, but that is The Absolutely True Diary of a Part-Time Indian by Sherman Alexi. And I read it when it was recommended to me from the librarian, and I really liked it, except toward the end I think it got tiresome because it was just always talking about race and him being an Indian. And it just got tiresome because I like the guy, or the kid, or whatever. And I don't know, it just kept on with racism and I was like, okay, come on, it's getting old, come on. I don't know. But I still really liked it and I was real excited when I saw this as a signed copy, so I picked it up and I'm glad I got it. The next book is Orson Scott Card, The Crystal City. Orson Scott Card famously wrote Ender's Game, which is another book on the top 1000 list. I have not read it or this book. This book is actually like the fourth or fifth in a series. So I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm, I'm guessing I'll read Ender's Game first because I'm not really big into science fiction, but I knew Orson Scott Card, and I knew Ender's Game. Partially, I think, because of Futurama. I think there's a episode called Bender's Game. In fact, yeah, it's uh, one of the feature movies, I think. But, yeah. I actually want to show off the autograph, too, because it's pretty sweet. He has a real big, kind of flourishy autograph. The next writer appears on the top 1000 list, and it's for part of the series, but it's Armistead Mop. Michael Tolliver Lives. I read the first book in the series, I think, which was the Top 1000 book, and I kind of liked it at first, but it just quickly grew old for me. But I saw this at the bookstore and I knew the author, because of course I read the book. Um, so I was just real glad to get it. The next book is Of Many, The Moocher and Me by Cab Calloway. Birds. I knew of Cab Calloway from two places. The first is from Whose Line Is It Anyway? There's a scene where Wayne sings a song in the style of Cab Calloway. The other place I know him from is the Blues Brothers movie. So I knew he was like a legend for like, I don't know the genre, like if it's jazz or R&B or early rock or exactly what the genre is. But I knew Cab Calloway was a real kind of classic American musician, so I definitely got it when I saw it. Last off the top shelf is America's Game by Jerry Rice, wide receiver Jerry Rice. So I'm not really a big fan of his really, because he probably played for the 49ers and I'm a Seahawks fan, but he's the best wide receiver of all time and I'm a sucker for signed books, so combine the most greatest wide receiver of all time with a signed book and you know I'm a sucker to buy it. So that is the last book off the top shelf. Moving on to the next shelf, you could see a few books here are gone. First is two books by Joseph Heller who famously wrote Catch-22. There's No Laughing Matter and God Knows. I think Joseph Heller is on the top 1,000 list for both Catch-22 and Something Happened. So I don't know which book I'll read from him first. I have Catch-22 and I have both of these books, so I don't know. Next is an author I haven't read before, but he's an author I've been wanting an autograph for a while, and I finally found one. John Grisham, The Client. And I think this is a first edition too, which is pretty sweet. Next off the top 1000 list for his book In the Name of the Rose is Umberto Eco, The Mysterious Flame of Queen Loana. Loana? I have never read a book by Eco. I'm kind of have some high expectations. Not high expectations necessarily, birds. But I'm just hoping he's good. And I think he also is a very influential writer. Like I think the writer Dan Brown was heavily inspired by Umberto Eco. So I'm excited to give the book a read. Next, I've seen his books everywhere and I haven't read any of them. But it's 
Turtles All the Way Down by John Green. And that's all I have to say about that. The next one is a book that is probably an author I would not buy just because I'm not into it, but it's Angie Thomas on the come up. She wrote The Hate You Give, which I'd seen everywhere and I knew is a real popular book. But I don't really want to go into it, but it's just a book I probably wouldn't like. Bird! But I know how popular it is, so when I saw a signed book by her, I just had to get it. So I kind of just got it just for the autograph, not really with the intention of reading it. So, yeah, there you go. Next is another author I just got just because it was autographed. That's Lauren Oliver, Broken Things. No clue about it, and I haven't gone around to reading it yet. I've had it for like two or three years. So I really just got it for the autograph. So yeah. Next is one of three autographs I have by him. Clive Cussler, The Emperor's Revenge. Clive Cussler was my favorite author for like 15 years, ever since high school really. Cussler is really the first author I ever read. His book Atlantis Found. That's the book that really got me into reading. Birds! And it inspired me to write a series, the Trevor Knight series, based largely on Cussler's books. So, Clive Cussler is a very influential writer for me. So I have three autographs by him. I have this book. I also have like a poster of his that's signed. And then I have a handwritten letter that he wrote me, and of course signed, because I wrote him a letter telling him about how I liked his books and how he inspired me to write these books, the Trevor Knight series, kind of inspired by his books. And he wrote me back a very gracious letter, and I just love it, and I'm so glad I have that. So, three autographs by Clive Cussler. So, huge influence for me. Next are two signed books by Salman Rushdie. I don't know where I heard of his name before. Of course, I think he's on the top 1,000 list for, I think, Midnight's Children. It's either Midnight's Children or the Satanic Verses. But Salman Rushdie is an author who is he's kind of considered profane or whatever, or sacrilegious. And his book, especially uh, the Satanic Verses, got basically a hit order put out on him by Iran. So Iran basically said if any Muslim around the world kills Salman Rushdie, they'll get rewarded. So I'm just fond of him for that reason, because it's it takes guts to do that. And so I haven't read any of his books yet. I also got a copy of Midnight's Children. So I am very excited to read a Salman Rushdie book, but I saw both of these were signed and I just had to get them because one I heard of him before I don't know where though and I mean that's before the top 1000 list I just knew the name Salman Rushdie but I don't know from what so I'm really excited to read his books and I have pretty high hopes that I'll enjoy them so that's next next on the list is Robin Carr the family gathering I've read a few of Robin Carr's Virgin River books, and they kind of inspired me to write a series that's kind of on the back burner for me called the Booth Bay Harbor series. It's heavily inspired by Robin Carr's Virgin River books. So I just saw this book signed, and I knew the author. I read a few of her books, so I just had to get it. So there you go. And now we move on to this shelf. Okay, and this should show you how many signed books come off this shelf. First, we got The Matchmaker's List by Sonia Lolly. I have no clue about this book. I just saw it at Target, and I was like, eh, signed book, may as well get it. So, there's that. Same thing for this one, except I actually read this one. Leopard at the Door by Jennifer McVeigh. Um... I thought the book was kind of just okay. I don't really like it all that much, but meh, I don't know. 
Next is a very special book to me. That is Awaken by R.E.S. Tidemore. This is special to me because I knew the author from a writing group and she is single-handedly the one most responsible for helping to get me published. And why I say that is because she was an author from Create Space, which is now Amazon Kindle Direct Publishing. And so what she did is she guided me through the whole process. She helps format some of my files. She helped me figure out how to do the book cover and everything. So she is the main one responsible for helping to get me published. If not for her, I'd probably not be published now. And so I'm eternally grateful to her. And yeah, just thank you. I think her first name is Ruth, but thank you, Ruth. I hope her name is Ruth. I'm like 90% sure. Wherever you are, Ruth, if that is your name, thank you very much. I'll never forget it. And also it's what she did helping me to get published. It really sends a very powerful message because it's like she helped me get published. Sorry, I fumbled that word. So it's kind of like I owe it to other authors to help them if I can. So it's just you know, I got helped up, so I help others up if I can as well. So next I've read one of her books, but it's Jill Shalvis, Rainy Day Friends. Uh, the book I read by her, it's kind of Robin Carr-esque. Not exactly the same, but I mean, it's kind of that same genre of books. And I think I didn't like it. And the main reason was, is because this character, the protagonist, has this secret which she's gonna just keep to herself and it's gonna get bottled up until the very end when it finally the truth comes out and it just terrible, terrible. And all she had to do was just sit down and talk with the guy and just have a conversation with him for two minutes right at the start and everything would have been fine. They could have easily worked out their problems just by talking. And I hate books that do that, where it's just this problem is blown out of proportion and it could all be solved just by the characters having a 20 second conversation. So anyway, I saw it was signed and I just got it anyway because I'm a sucker for signed books. So there you go. I've mentioned this one in a couple of videos already now, so I'm not going to get into it, but it's Eleanor Oliphant is completely fine. I'm just so glad I got a signed copy of this because I love Eleanor. This is one of my favorite books ever and it's also on my top 10 favorite books which I just posted so if you want to go see that video go click over to it. But Eleanor Oliphant is completely fine. I am so glad and thankful I got this book signed. Next is The Strangers by Margaret Peter... Peter something. Let's see. Margaret Peterson Habits. Oh, I always thought that said Maddox right there, but it's Haddix. So Margaret Peterson Haddix. I have no clue about this book. I just saw it at Target and I'm a sucker for signed books. So you know I got it. So that's next. This next one I got from Walmart. I have not seen many signed books from Walmart. In fact, this may be the only one. Actually, I think I saw Turtles All the Way Down by John Green signed there too. But the one I got from was from Target. But Val Kilmer, I'm Your Huckleberry. So it's like his memoirs, I guess. And I really like Val Kilmer, of course. I most know him from the Batman movie. So he's my Batman. So I'm just glad I got that. And of course, uh, Top Gun. How could I forget Top Gun? But, yeah. Hey, while we're talking about Top Gun, the next one is Lee Child, uh, Past Tense. So, isn't that a movie featuring Tom Cruise? So, eh, Top Gun. Anyway, Lee Child. I'm glad I got it. Um, I did read, I think, the first book in the series. But I don't remember liking it, and I don't remember exactly why, but I just remember I did not last long in it. Next is a book I got at Books A Million in West Virginia, but that's Marco Rubio, An American Son. And I got this book around 2012-ish. 
So I was real hopeful that he would become president so I would have my first presidential autograph. But apparently it was not meant to be. I guess there's still possibility in the future, but I think that possibility is very thin. But anyway, Marco Rubio, senator from Florida. So there you go. Speaking of presidential autographs, the next one is The Vantage Point by Lyndon Baines Johnson, LBJ. So to me, I say LBJ and I think Lyndon Baines Johnson. Most people would probably think LeBron James. But anyway, this was my first presidential autograph. So there you go. Next is one I got about half a year back, but it's My Life by Bill Clinton. This is another book I read quite a while ago. The main thing I didn't like about it is he refers to his dad in the book as daddy, which was really weird. Just like this 70 year old guy saying daddy, blah, 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 daddy, daddy. And it's just like, geez, this guy has some serious daddy issues. I mean, what grown man refers to his dad as daddy? That's just weird. There is also a story with this one. The bookstore owner, I asked him how he got this book, and he said that a woman he knew worked at a bookstore where they had book signings, and so Bill Clinton went in one day to do the book signing, and she said that in all of her time working at the bookstore, Bill Clinton is the only author who ever yelled at her. So that's just an interesting story. So. Um, and so apparently she just did not want the book. She didn't want to have anything to do with Clinton after that. So she just gave it to the bookstore owner. And so he sold it to me. So. Next, I think, is a local author because I actually got it at a gas station of all places. But that is Lover's Curse by Ruthie L. Manier. Um, so it's just a local author, so I got it. And it's also a vampire book, which I'm really not a fan of. But I do remember trying to read it, and I think I gave it a pretty decent review. Since it's a local author and didn't have many reviews. So... Next one is a book I'm really fond of, Bill Nye, Unstoppable. I am not a fan of Bill Nye's, like, political stuff, but I loved the Bill Nye show as a kid. I mean, who didn't? It's just Bill Nye is the best thing ever for kids getting into science. So I saw this and I was just like, oh, be still my heart. Bill Nye autograph. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. So I'm real glad I got that. The next two are part of a series. I read the first book, which is a Batman book by, I think, Leia Bergdahl or something. I don't know her name. But the first one is Superman by, where's the name? Matt De, De La Pena. And the other one is Catwoman by Sarah J. Maas. I always want to say her name is Sarah J. Mass, but I guess it's Maas. But I saw this one first and I was like, oh, Sarah J. Maas, I know her from that, what is it, Throne of Glass. I tried reading that book and I just hated it. And I could go into it, but this video is already long enough, so I won't. But I knew she was a very beloved author. So I got this and then I saw this one a short while later. So I got that too. So there you go. I don't know why I'm saying there you go so much. Oh, it turns out there was another sign book at Walmart. And I guess I got this one the same day as the Val Kilmer autograph. But that's The Darkest King by Gina Showalter. No clue about it, really no interest in reading it, but it was signed, so I had to get it. Another book from Target. A lot of these come from Target. That is Midnight Jewel by Rochelle Mead. I know of her book, The Glittering Court, which I'd seen for a while, so when I saw there was a signed book by her, this is book two in the series, I just had to get it. And then I went back and I read The Glittering Court, which I liked, pretty well actually 
But then I tried reading this one, book two, and I just didn't like it because it was really the same book from a different character's perspective, but it had many of the exact same scenes and same quotes just from a different character's perspective. And I was just like, hey, I just read this book and you're going to sell me a book that has 60% of the exact same scenes. That's just a ripoff. But anyway, I know she's a very popular author, so I'm glad I got it. My legs. <laughs> okay, continuing on, we got Robert Penn Warren, New and Selected Poems. Robert Penn Warren, he's most famous and he's on the top 1000 list for all the... I forget if it's all the King's Men or all the President's Men or something like that. It's something all the something men. Um, and I read that book book and I thought it was another book that's just okay I didn't really like it all that much but Robert Penn Warren is the only writer to ever get a Pulitzer for fiction and poetry the only writer to ever do that so this is a book of his poems so I just had to get it next I'm going to show them together but it's Empire by Gore Vidal and Tough Guys Don't Dance by Norman Mailer I talk about them in a couple other videos, especially one of my wrap-up videos. I think, in, I don't know if it's a January wrap-up or February. I think it's a January wrap-up. So I talk about them in length, um, so I won't get into it here. But I read Empire by Gore Vidal and I really liked it. The description was really good. The book was about 100 pages too long, but I still think it was a four or five star book. It was just pretty good. I think it was a four star book I gave it. Uh, Norman Mailer, I read his book Armies of the Night, which I think won him a Pulitzer. And that's also the book he's on the top 1000 list for. Both of these writers are on the top 1000 list. Uh, this one is Tough Guys Don't Dance. I haven't read it yet. But another book I recently got by him, and it's up here somewhere, is The Naked and the Dead. That was kind of, I think, the book that launched him into success. So these are the next two books, Empire by Gore Vidal and Tough Guys Don't Dance by Norman Mailer. Next is Time Bends by Arthur Miller. Arthur Miller is most famous for Death of a Salesman, which is on the top 1000 list as well as The Crucible, which I read in high school, I guess. It was required reading. And I don't really remember it too much. I just remember we got to watch the... I don't know if it's a movie or TV show or whatever, but it was the film adaptation of The Crucible. And I always like that because it feels like it's a day off of class when you get to watch a movie in class. So, Time Bends by Arthur Miller. Next is John Updike, Roger's version. John Updike is kind of considered one of the great American writers, birds. And Updike is one of four writers to ever get more than one Pulitzer for fiction. So four writers have more than one Pulitzer for fiction. One of them is John Updike. And he's on the top 1000 list as well. And yeah. Next would be What's Wrong With Sports by Howard Cosell. I would do an impression of him. Is it an impression or impersonation? I don't know. Is there a difference? Anyway, What's Wrong With Sports by Howard Cosell. Just a legendary figure for sports broadcasting. So, there you go. Next is a book I am super glad to get. I've been wanting it for years, and I never really thought I would. But that is Disclosure by Michael Crichton. And it's not the disclosure I wanted, it's the autograph by Michael Crichton. Crichton is one of my favorite writers. In fact, there's a book by him right over there. Um, I just love several of my, Michael Crichton's books and I was wanting his autograph and so I found this one on Amazon and I trust it because it's a specific signed edition book. I read Disclosure several years back and I didn't like it much at all but I'm just so super happy I got to get a signed Michael Crichton book so I just love that.
Michael Crichton is also an author I mentioned in my top 10 favorite books video, so go give that a click too and see where I rank Michael Crichton for my favorite books. Next is The Kingdom of the Wicked by Anthony Burgess. Burgess? Burgess? I don't know. But he is most famous for his book A Clockwork Orange, which is of course a top 1000 book. I have not seen the movie, I guess. I think the movie is kind of more famous than the book. Or at least the movie is a classic, so... Anyway, Anthony Burgess. Next is William Buckley Jr., The Story of Henry Todd. If you don't know, William Buckley Jr. was basically the voice of conservative Americans in the 1960s, 1970s. So, I mean, he was like it. Conservatives, Republicans grew up listening to William Buckley Jr. So I got it for that, for the historical value, I guess. And I think he also, he wrote a lot of things in his life, but one of the things he wrote is this, I think, a spy series. And I think this is like book eight or something in that series. Next is a book I was super thrilled to find, but it is Bluebeard by Kurt Vonnegut. Vonnegut is, of course, most famous for Slaughterhouse-Five, which is a top 1000 book, which I have not read yet, but it's definitely on my to-read list. So, Bluebeard. I actually hear that several fans of Kurt Vonnegut list this as one of their favorite books by him, so I'm pretty excited about it. Next is a book I got about half a year back. Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children, signed by Ransom Riggs. This is a book that I was hoping to get autographed for a long while, or even just a Ransom Riggs autograph. I'm not a big fan of his because I tried reading this book years ago. Birds! 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 Hey! Shh! Cállate! Cállate la boca! birds. Never buy birds. They're just unlivable. Okay, Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children. I read it several years ago and I just didn't like it because it gave me huge Catcher in the Rye vibes and I just did not like Catcher in the Rye. And the protagonist in this book seemed very much like the protagonist in Catcher in the Rye. Just kind of this cocky kid who's just unlikable. And the thing with this book is the allure is supposed to be the pictures. But to me, the book feels very much like it's a writing exercise book. Like he just looks at these pictures and writes a story to them. And I know that's pretty literally what he does. But... I don't know, I just didn't like it very much. It feels like it's a book that's good for like a writing warm-ups exercise. Just taking a picture and writing a book to it. Or a story to it. But, I don't know, I kind of think the series is overrated. I just couldn't get into it that much. But I was very thrilled when I saw this signed copy. I mean, it's like a book I've been hoping to get signed. Just because I'm a sucker for signed books. And I finally found it. So, there you go. I promise I'm not going to say there you go another time. I'm done with it. I'm not saying it again. Hold me to it. Next, I know you've heard this before. It's a book I was super excited to find autographed. But it's The Book and the Brotherhood by Iris Murdoch. And it's not the book, but it's the author I really wanted autographed or an autograph from. And I heard about Iris Murdoch because she is on the top 1000 list for her book, The Sea, The Sea. And so I read that book not knowing anything about it. And as I read the first chapter, I was kind of like, okay, it's okay. But by the end of the first chapter, I was like, oh my God, I mean, this is like a classic. So, the thing is, I read like 60, 70 pages of that book, The Sea, The Sea, and I had to return it. 
it is a book I intend to finish at some point and I don't know it's just I have real high hopes for it it could be a definite five star book so when I saw there was this signed book by her I just had to get it so that is next that isn't what I was supposed to say right I forget what's the phrase I'm supposed to avoid I have no clue maybe I just said it oh yes I remember what I was supposed to say I won't say it next is the key to the Indian by Lynn Reed Banks she is the author of Indian in the cupboard which I loved as a kid that movie is one of my favorite movies and so I read the book about two years back the Indian in the cupboard and I liked it pretty well so I saw this book which is I think this is book four or five in the series so I should read the second book but I'm really glad I got that next is another book I was really glad to get I'm just really glad to get any signed books but it's somebody's darling by Larry McMurdy McMurdy is most famous for his top 1000 book Lonesome Dove so I started reading Lonesome Dove a couple years ago and it's another book that I thought could be a true classic I was reading Gone with the Wind at the time as well and so Lonesome Dove felt very much like Gone with the Wind it was just a perfectly written book I thought I did not get very far and I do intend to finish reading it or at least pick it up again so when I saw this a signed book by Larry McMurdy I was like ooh gotta have it gotta have it but any signed book I see I'm like gotta have it gotta have it okay let's put all these books back and then move on to the final shelf at the bottom most of these are books I just saw at Target one day and just got so they're not books I really care about what if it's Us by Becky Albertalli and Adam Siv Sil Sil what? Silvera. Anyway. Impostos by Scott Westfeld. Bridge of Clay by Marcus Zuzak from the author of The Book Thief, which I haven't read, but I've seen around somewhere before. Debbie McCumber, Cottage by the Sea. I don't know if I've read her books before. I imagine I have read a couple. She's much like Robin Carr. It's that same kind of genre. But... And Susan, why do I say Suzanne? Susan Mallory, Where We Found Home. Uh, again, I think I've read one or two books by her. Not a huge fan. Just another kind of Robin Carr-esque writer. So. Next is Kirsten White, Brightest We Burn. I think I have... I don't know if this is the third book in the series, but I had two other books by her in the same series. But basically I lost them. So, yeah. so that's all I have now. And the first book in the series, I don't remember the name. It's something about, um, like, the Byzantines or the Ottomans. And I thought it was okay. Nothing more. But yeah. Okay, the next two are books I was definitely excited to get. But... That would be Veronica Roth, The End and Other Beginnings, and The Fates Decide. Divide, not decide. The Fates Divide. I was almost going to say it again. Anyway, Veronica Roth is the author of Divergent, which I read and I liked pretty well. But I pretty much tore it apart in my Goodreads review because she repeatedly said something about Triss's heartbeat and I just marked down every single time she said heartbeat and I listed them so if I can I'll post the link of my Goodreads review because it's just entertaining I think I just go after Veronica Roth for the heartbeat stuff but I was thrilled when I saw both of these signed books the first one I was like I need to get it it's Veronica Roth author of Divergent then I saw the other one and I was like 
Well, it's signed, so I have to get it. Next is Dean Koontz, The Forbidden Door. I've never read any Dean Koontz book before, but I know... I mean, it's Dean Koontz. you got to know Dean Koontz, so I just had to get it. Uh, I don't think it's the first book in the series, though, so I don't know. Next is on the top 1,000 books for his book, The Things They Carried, but it's In the Lake of the Woods by Tim O'Brien. So, eh, nothing to say about it. I haven't read him yet, but I do definitely intend to. Last of all is Anne Rice, Blood Communion. So, the author of Interview with a Vampire. I mean, it's Anne Rice. She's the queen of vampire books. So, after getting this, I went back and I read Interview with the Vampire. Or, I don't know if it's a vampire or the vampire. But I did not like it. My problem with Interview with a or the vampire, I don't know which it is. I need to look, I need to check, let's see. Interview with Princess Interview with the vampire. Okay, it's Interview with the vampire. So in that book, there's basically, they turn this female child into a vampire. And I thought it was really crossing the line. Not just the fact that they turned this girl into a vampire, but it's the way it's written. It's like there's this sexual thing going on with these vampires and with this little girl. So their, like, obsession with her, I thought it was very sexual. And I was just like, um, excuse me, she is a child. Why are you just sleeping with her and necking with her and all this stuff? And I was just like, uh... Hit the brakes on that one, Anne Rice. I mean, it's just... Uh-uh. No, 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 no. But, anyway, she's the queen of vampire fiction, so... There you go. I said it again! <laughs> anyway, that's all my signed books. So, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye! I can't believe I said it again at the very end! Thank you.